Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister has made the plea for OECS member states to place more attention on adaptation. The Global Environment Facility has signed $4 million US dollars to St. Lucia's climate change efforts. Junior Carnival gears up for another spectacular display. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. St. Lucia's Prime Minister, the Honorable Alan Chastney, made the plea for OECS member states to place more attention on adaptation as opposed to waiting on help from developed countries. Prime Minister Chastney made the call at the fourth sitting of the OECS Assembly held Monday in Antigua, Barbuda. The 67th meeting of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Authority, which featured the sitting of the OECS Parliament, brought together government leaders and politicians to address issues facing member states. Among the issues is climate change, a major talking point for member states as the oceans continue to warm and sea levels continue to rise. While the OECS Assembly urges countries to fulfill their existing pledges and raise the level of financing made available to developing states, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney is of the view that more than likely first world countries will not reduce their emissions sufficiently to an acceptable level. The reality that global warming shall continue and the reality that as a result of global warming that we are going to have more unpredictable and more disastrous hurricane seasons and weather patterns is a reality. And therefore, accepting that reality and being responsible governments that we must now allocate the necessary resources in order to be able to build the, re the requisite infrastructure to provide the resilience to the people <coughs> of our region and to protect our own assets. St. Vincent and the Grenadines representative Camilo Gonzalez agrees with Prime Minister Alan Chastney and went further to say that more resources for adaptation are mandatory. We have to understand that we have to mobilize creatively resources on our own because all the money, if we wait for it, we'll be waiting for, for, for something that might not arrive. We have to understand that adaptation is paramount because we have to prepare for a world beyond 1.5 degrees and not simply wish for 1.5 degrees. We have to understand and we have to explain, even though the Honorable Prime Minister of St. Lucia is frustrated about it, we have to explain to people again and again and again that when a hurricane comes, it doesn't ask if Antigua and Barbuda is a high-level, high-income country and therefore skip it. Or it doesn't ask the British Virgin Islands if their per capita GDP is, is one of the higher per capita GDPs in the region. The hurricane comes and hits everybody. And our small islands and small economies cannot rebuild without grant and concessional funding. The OECS Assembly urged developed countries to address climate change with greater urgency and to rapidly and significantly enhance their mitigation ambition. The fourth OECS Assembly was held in Antigua and Barbuda on Monday. Meanwhile, the Global Environment Facility, Jeff, has just concluded its 56th Council meeting in Washington, D.C., and has approved almost $1 billion U.S. dollars worth of projects. The main areas of focus for the Jeff is climate change, biodiversity, chemicals and waste, land degradation, sustainable forest management, and international waters. Solution has been assigned $4 million U.S. dollars to undertake projects for climate change mitigation, 1 million, biodiversity, 2 million, and land degradation, 1 million dollars. St. Lucia has over the years benefited immensely from Jeff's resources. St. Lucia has received over 10 million dollars for 11 national projects. The marketing of tourism within the OECS is expected to take on a more coordinated approach following an agreement by OECS ministers of tourism to strengthen the region's tourism brand. The decision was taken at the sixth meeting of OECS Council of Ministers for Tourism. Jacqueline Emmanuel Flood is the head of economic affairs at the OECS Commission. More than anything else, we came out of this of this meeting with an approach and agreement, and we have been putting together a working group who was going to look at how we can do this collectively, an efficient mechanism and approach whereby we can promote the OECS tourism brand on a sustainable basis. I think this was perhaps one of the highlights of today's meeting. 
we were able also to come together to get the minister's support and their, their views for us to move forward in operationalizing the Eastern Caribbean Institute of Tourism, which is a virtual integrated tourism institute that is comprised of centers of excellence for different specialities in different member states. It's a very important project for us, not just for capacity building in the OECS tourism industry, but also to continue to profile and develop our industry as a center of excellence globally. And that was Jacqueline Emmanuel Flood of the OECS Commission. The celebration of the island's main cultural showpiece is one month away, with organizers feverishly working towards a spectacular display. Among them is the Junior Carnival Committee. Let's hear more in this report. Colors, themes and excitement fill the air at the launch of Junior Carnival 2019. The first ever press launch of the event, according to President of the Carnival Bands Association, Barry George, was geared towards introducing new bands to the public and helping bands increase their visibility. Tonight we featured eight of the bands that will be competing um, for Junior Carnival, which will be on the 7th of July at the Saab. And, and the eight bands, of course, will be competing in, in four major categories, which is um, the Individual of the Year, the K Junior King and Junior Queen of the Bands, and of course the Band of the Year title. The president also highlighted that a new route would be utilized for Junior Carnival 2019. He noted that this was all in an effort to ensure a safer environment for the children where they can have fun. We try to make a more friendly environment for the kids and we want to bring a, a, a more spectator aspect for, the, for, for, the, um, for those coming to watch Junior Carnival. The roadside sometimes, it, whilst it works, you, it, we try to create an, an, an area where families can come in, sit in and look upon the stage. We want it to be um, interactive where there is, a, 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 how you call it, a, a, a family village that, that the event can host everybody in terms of bouncing castles, a place where it's safe and sound you know, for the children to, to parade on Carnival and, and Junior Carnival. Junior Carnival is scheduled for the 7th of July 2019 at the Saab Playing Field. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The world's climate is changing and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Welcome to your update on youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. The Inter-Primary and Secondary School Swim Championships are said to be held at the Rodney Heights Aquatic Centre June 21st. The swimmers will swim in age groups as per FINA rules. Age, as of December 31st, 2018, will determine the age group in which swimmers participate. Each school allowed to enter no more than four swimmers per age group and six in individual events. However, only two swimmers per team will be allowed to score. Each school may enter up to two relay teams in a relay event. There shall be neither substitutes nor alternatives in individual events. Swimmers may enter a maximum of three events. Medals will be awarded for the first three places per event, trophies for age group winners 
and the overall meet winner will be awarded at the annual school sports award ceremony scheduled for june 28th the relays will not count towards points and are fun events only scoring will be first place nine points second place seven points third place six points fourth place five points fifth place four points sixth place three points seventh place two points and eighth place one point the saint lucia aquatics federation will provide the meet referee chief timer, stroke and turn officials. All events are time finals and seeded according to entry times or no time if none is available. The pool will be open one hour before the meet for warm up. Lane assignments will be given upon arrival at the pool. Swimmers are reminded that they must wear uniforms in the March pass during the opening ceremony. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, in collaboration with other government agencies, together with the National Table Tennis Association, see the need to develop and showcase the special needs athletes' abilities in a fun and safe environment, and recognize the need to ensure that sports are for all. To this end, table tennis will be the sport used to express their abilities. Six schools will be participating in a fiesta and competition at the Bosejo indoor facility on Wednesday from 10 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. The schools participating are Donata School, Educare Learning Center, Lady Gordon Opportunity Center, Denry Children's Center Special Ed, Vierfort Special Education Center, Sufret Special Education Rehabilitation Center. The table tennis tournament will take the format of open singles for both the male and female competitors. Preliminary round-robin matches of one single game to 11 points will be played during the group stage, quarterfinals and semi-finals. The finals will be played two best in three games. Medals will be presented to top finishers in the championships. The physical literacy fiesta will be taking place throughout the day as the students will have the opportunity to participate in six activities in the order of their choice. These activities focus on the ABCs, agility, balance, coordination, and speed, which are skills needed. The six stages are forehand bounce, backhand bounce, alternating forehand and backhand bounce, transfer balls, skipping, and agility ladder. The students who complete the six activities will be presented with certificates. Each school will also have a team consisting of four athletes, comprising two boys and two girls for the balancing ball relay. And that's your update on new development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. Bank of St. Lucia recently partnered with two local organizations that educate young women on sexual and reproductive health and bring attention to the seriousness of the autoimmune disease, lupus. The month of May was quite an eventful month for education, with a number of observances such as Reading Awareness Month and Lupus Awareness, among many others. In keeping with its community outreach programs, Bank of St. Lucia lent its support to two organizations with initiatives focusing on two vulnerable groups in society, teenage girls and persons affected with lupus in St. Lucia. Earlier this month, representatives from two of these groups visited the bank for the official check presentation ceremony. This year, Bank of St. Lucia has supported a number of initiatives. Two of these were in support of the Historic Collective, headed by Dr. Robin Shari White, and we also collaborated with the St. Lucia Arthritis and Lupus Association. This year, to help raise awareness with our staff and the general public, uh, we gave the option to staff to purchase purple polo shirts, and the proceeds of these purchases were then handed over today to the association. It's very important to us here at Bank of St. Lucia to continue to be the people's bank, to continue to be a bank that is involved in our communities. The Hustua Collective is a group of individuals primarily based in St. Lucia who advocate for sexual and reproductive health and rights of women throughout the Caribbean. According to organizers, the launch of their latest Huffler initiative targets various schools empowering young girls about menstrual health and hygiene. We recognize that um, there were some programs looking at menstrual hygiene and education at the lower levels in primary schools um, at the time when students are 
focusing on common entrance. And so a lot of the secondary schools didn't have any of these initiatives. And so we tried to fill in the gap, um, especially looking at outer districts and rural areas. A lot of these girls um, don't have anyone teaching them about menstruation. Um, although we look at sexual and reproductive health and rights, it begins with menstruation. And if they don't understand why they're even getting a period or what menstruation is, that word is foreign to a lot of them. The bank's donation to the St. Lucia Arthritis and Lupus Association was focused on raising awareness for lupus and teaching persons affected how to manage the disease. We are extremely grateful to the Bank of St. Lucia because we spend the whole year fundraising. We have an office to rent, we have an administrator who works there for three days a week and we need to fundraise just to keep things going. So we are grateful to the Bank of St. Lucia who's taken us on board and we hope they continue to stick with us. According to Bank of St. Lucia officials, the bank will continue to demonstrate its commitment to the people of St. Lucia by supporting initiatives like these which focus on the development of human resources and the nation as a whole. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueol. I'm innovative. I'm competitive. I am productive. I'm creative. I constantly improve what I do. And how I do it. I provide excellent customer service. I never stop learning. I give up my best, always. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, embracing excellence. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui est responsable pour information. Gouvernement cette ici, GIS, Assemblée de Télévision Nationale, NTN, qui est la Nouvelle Arqueo, présent au Primus Hutchinson. Your ambulance nef au service les pompiers à Denry. C'est un qui est critique. Ça, c'est l'opinion du deuxième chef officier de Popier, c'est le ci, George Victrim. Victrim a parlé après l'institution de coopération pour le Japon, fait service de Popier, c'est le ci, avec une quantité d'équipements et une ambulance nouveau. Le deuxième chef de Popier a expliqué qui raison qui fait le choisi de nous. C'est parce qu'il y a un pile d'accidents qui a trouvé à Sougouan, Chimé, Santé Castri, pour venir fort. L'ambulance a été là et qui a il a aidé nous pour traiter les gens qui ont eu un accident à ce qui est le top primaire. Victorie aussi profiter de l'occasion pour remercier les chauffeurs de l'auto qui a conduit à ce grand chemin. Il a dit que la compréhension a fait le travail de l'autopier top plus facile. Parce que tout driver qui a corporé bien et puis nous avec l'ambulance et le truck qui a dit qu'il y a un chemin. À chaque fois, il y a presque tout. Nous avons beaucoup de compréhension. Thank you. Mais c'est juste Yonde qui a fait ça. Et si là, Yonde qui a fait ça, c'est Yonde qui a fait ça. Donc nous avons un pile pour ces drivers. Un plaidé avec vous. Souple. Right? Assistez-nous. Parce que de laisser la famille, de laisser la propriété, de laisser la caillou qui a brûlé. Donc là où est l'ambulance là sous Chimia, où est le truc de faire sous Chimia. Um, Travaillez avec nous. Assistez-nous. Pour ça, nous avons assisté et faire la vie. Ou, et la vie, c'est tout simplement. Yon, moi, son législation pour protection et pour adopter les enfants, car vous placez ça qui était existé avant. En bas, loi ça là, avant, c'est quand il conseil qui était responsable pour adresser les lois ça là, qui venu en opération en l'année 2018. C'est un comité qui était responsable pour lui. Malheureusement, le comité ça là, juste toujours, pour encore établi. Mais le 11 juin, l'année ici, loi ça là, pour protection et pour adopter les enfants, vous avez trouvé établi en le parlement et ça a fait possible pour adresser vos applications à de façon plus facile. Le ministre qui est responsable pour l'égalité et la justice sociale, on est à l'aide de mon tout, dit que ça a fait un peu plus de l'autre façon pour continuer à faire des applications pour adopter les enfants. Sinon, on est à mon tout parce qu'il a été un directeur pour adresser les services comme ça, un comité pour adresser les situations qui ont existé non plus. Tout ça, c'est le ministre, pour tout est l'occasion, il y a des tirs à les casser, côté les officiers de loi et le public là aussi, il y a un doute qui direction pour pouvoir. À présent, l'année officier qui a chopé position comme directeur pour le moment. Le ministre de l'égalité a déclaré que 
yo ka fait provision à présent pour ni une division à part côté ka conseil ça autorisé yo moun ki c'est un citoyen cette le ci et ben j'ai résident en pays pour 6 mois pour date application pour adopter nos enfants Département santé en collaboration et puis organisation santé Pan American, j'ai un commitment pour improuver le ménagement des conditions de monde qui a souffert et puis mauvaises maladies à PIA. Pour raison ça, il a un programme d'entraînement récemment pour qui a conduit pour monde qui a conduit programme pour ménager à faire mauvaises maladies à PIA cette ci Alors les professionnels à travail santé PIA avec les chefs en diverses communes ont trouvé l'occasion pour bâtir à sous capacité et aussi pour te servir les outils pour effectivement pour tuer les services pour les gens qui vivent et puis mauvaises maladies. Parmi ces conditions maladies, c'est plus ça, doux, pressure, cancer, maladie en noir et mauvais fruits. Yolanda Alcindor, qui a conduit l'étonnement saladé, qui a un espoir d'étonnement qui a pour tuer l'habilité pour adresser plus bien les gens qui ont souffert et puis ces maladies. Ici, je vais pour l'année programme en toute commune pour faciliter mais assistance pour les gens qui ont souffert et puis ces maladies. Et fait conquiper pour que tout le monde qui a souffert et puis c'est malade, ça a participé. participé. Parmi eux, ça a appris, si l'on a le droit de cette manière, pour apprendre pour l'inspiration primaire, pour nous faire une plus bonne soirée, ça veut dire pour dormir à repos, service et remettre la bien, pour apprendre pour une bonne communication, pour développer une bonne habitude de manière à manger et pour faire un bon exercice à parmi l'autre. Il y a ces participants, Sandra Félix Paul, félicité étonnement, comme ça qu'il fait, il est plus capable pour assister les gens qui ont souffert et puis c'est mauvais maladie ça là. Et c'est comme ça nous avons trois bouts de nouvelles là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder, je vous invite au prochain et puis moi encore, je vais présenter l'autre nouvelle à quoi il y a présent. Je vous présente au Nisha. Merci au Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. A tropical wave located just east of the Lesser Antilles is expected to affect mainly the southernmost eastern Caribbean islands this evening and continue into Wednesday. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Saharan dust haze will continue to cause a reduction in visibility around the Lesser Antilles. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves 6 to 8 feet or 1.8 to 2.4 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds, rough seas and reduced visibility. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.36 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.